All right. It is your hybrid hustler on this Thursday, April 11th, 2024. We are doing some thumbnails today. And this is a first of the members only live streams. It's actually not live. It's a premiere. And so I'm doing something a little bit different today, right? And we're going to create a thumbnail really in just like two minutes. But before we create a thumbnail in just two minutes, and literally I'm going to set a timer for just two minutes. But before we even do that, I want to talk about why thumbnails are so important and why it is part of the major package within a video and that you upload onto YouTube. So let's talk about that. So when we talk about video and you, that you upload onto YouTube, if you're a content creator currently, if you're a gig tuber, if you're just a, uh, another YouTuber from any other niche or, or industry, you know that content is king and that we create this content, very important content, and we think it's so great. So we go ahead and we take our cameras, we take our phones, whatever the case may be, and you record. You sit and record 10, 20, 30 minutes. You spend hours editing or maybe nothing at all. And you just do no transitions, no editing. And you just upload the video right on YouTube studio. And so you create this great video and, and you believe in your heart. Everything that you've said is like, you know, perfect video content that everyone, everyone should know. You post it on, on YouTube. You have a little title like, hey, I'm going to create thumbnails today. And you upload it and you notice I'm not getting the, the, the views. I'm not getting the clicks. I'm not getting comments or likes or anything. Really, I'm not getting anything that shows that people are watching my video. And my video is very good has a lot of information to it, but why aren't people clicking? And there's really, there's two things that every video content creator should know before they upload the video. And then is one, it's your title. Titles are extremely important because when you think about it, you want to tell the viewer what this video is about, right? You don't going to upload a video about uh, thumbnails on YouTube and call it, um, how to win over the the fans, you know, or you're not going to say, uh, I made a hundred million dollars today, right? You're going to tell the, the viewers what this video is about. So if the video is about thumbnail creation, you're going to put on there thumbnail creation or how I can make thumbnails presentable or how I make my thumbnails or which of these are the best thumbnails for your video. It has to be like a hook. That hook is extremely important to your success in a video. Well, the second thing that before someone even clicks on your video, they see not only the title, but they see the thumbnail. Thumbnails are the most visual part of your video before anyone ever watches your video. So if you want to create this great 20 minute tutorial on how to create thumbnails for other people's YouTube videos or how my uh, thumbnails are the best thumbnails. If you're going to do a video like that, your thumbnail needs to show that for most of us who are part of the gig tube industry. If your video is all about catering apps or DoorDash or Uber eats, the thumbnail needs to represent what the video is about in that split second before the viewer looks at that thumbnail and decides whether or not to click on that video. And in typically if you scroll, cause everyone can scroll on their phone or their tablet or uh, on their computer or even through the TV, you have about three seconds to show why someone should click on your video other than the other videos that are probably competing with real estate space with your video. So when you think about it, you go on the main feed of YouTube and you see probably six, eight, nine different videos. 
they're all competing, even though they're maybe one is about music and the other one's about books and the other one's about, uh, you know, some movie that's out there and someone's interviewing someone. And then yours is hidden over there is uh, a gig tube or I'm doing DoorDash or maybe the entire feed is about DoorDash. What is going to set you apart from all the other videos that and all the other content on YouTube? So that viewer says, I need to click on that video. And so that's the purpose and the point of today's video, because thumbnails are probably the number one thing you can do to either make or break the viewership of your video. Let's dive into that. Before we go completely into making a, a thumbnail, let's talk about what's called the package. A package is everything that eclipses the video content itself. That could be everything from the title, the thumbnail, the description, the tags, everything that you would do behind the scenes. And if you know how to use YouTube studio, you've seen so many things other than just uploading a video to YouTube. You have to create the title. You have to create a thumbnail. You, and if you don't want to create a thumbnail, YouTube will provide a thumbnail for you based off of one of the frames of your video. There's the description, which in the description can be as long as you need that description to be to talk about your video, talk about any uh, products you're selling, talk about any um, uh, time frames of certain parts like chapters. So there's so much you can do tags, hashtags. So when we talk about the package, the package is much more than just the content of your video. It's everything that encompasses that video itself. So the main parts that when we talk about a package of your video is the title and the thumbnail. So, and what we're going to talk about today is creating a thumbnail. So this video literally is not going to be long at all because Creating a thumbnail does not have to be difficult, but at the same time, there's some principles to creating a thumbnail that probably everyone should just look at because at the end of the day, we're all creative, right? We all have our own creativity and there's no set exact example that you have to create a video this way or um, has to be looking this exact way. It doesn't have to be. That's your creativity but there's a few key points to take a look at that makes a difference, not only for the viewer's sake, because the viewer was going to want something appealing, but also for the YouTube algorithm. So let's talk about that before we get there. Let's uh, move this over and you'll see I'm using a program called Canva. So I'm actually going to go to um, Canva itself. And this right here is canva.com. So it's C-A-N-V-A.com. Uh, for most of what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be using Canva, the website. You can use it as an app on iPhone or Android, or you can just use the desktop app, uh, which is just straight up a website. Canva, if you don't know, it's much more than just creating thumbnails. It's creating anything that has design to it. So if you wanted to design or create a document, like you know, a word processing document, you can do that. If you wanted to create whiteboards or presentations, you have that capability of doing that. Social media, if you just click on social media, it gives you all the types of things you can do for social media. And that could be TikTok, Instagram, could be Snapchat, could be YouTube, could be Facebook, whatever the case may be. If you just want to create a video and they do have capabilities to create videos here, a uh, print products, if you are the type that likes to sell t-shirts or uh, other items like mugs and, and, and uh, sweatshirts and jackets and pillows and things like that, you can create a design and actually go and have it sent to professional printers that will print your item, either like a, a poster or in more advanced like t-shirts, and you can buy them right through Canva and you have that capability. You can create full out websites if you wanted to, and there's much, much more that Canva will allow you to do right through its website and or app. So pretty much it's the, the possibilities are endless, but 
what we're here to do is create a basic thumbnail. Now, I'm not going to go too much into Canva's app itself because I think if you know how to use any piece of a photo software or graphic art software, it's pretty much the same, right? But what I want to just this video is pretty much just about thumbnails, but once you learn the basics of a thumbnail, you can apply that technique to if you want to create um, other types of print or social media images or videos, or graphics, whatever the case may be, and you can do that right on this app. So when you look at Canva, now I use the professional version of Canva, which costs a little bit extra money. You can take a look at what the different cost plans are for Canva. Um, they do have, if you go to plans, there is a, pre, a free version of Canva, which is limited in some respects, but at the same time, you can basically make a thumbnail from scratch in less than two minutes using the free version. So don't think that you have to have a um, the pro version or even the Teams version of Canva uh, just to create a piece of software or piece of anything, you know? So uh, in this case, when we're creating thumbnails. You do not need pro or Teams. However, I do have the pro and I'll show you some differences with the pro that could make a difference in your end. So you can compare the pricing and then they have educational pricing, not for profit. So if you're a nonprofit organization or if you're an enterprise, there's different prices for that. So I am already a pro. So I'm going to, and actually I was a team and now I went down to a pro because I did have multiple users at one time. And then I went down to a pro, which is just me. So one of the easiest things about Canva is you can go right here to the search box and just type in anything you want. Really, it's you can type in keywords, you can type in um, a specific thing that you want to create. In this case, I'm literally just going to type in YouTube thumbnail. So if I were to go over here and type in YouTube, it's going to give me all the different types of templates. And when we talk about a template, a template is just pretty much a item that's already been created in some capacity for you to edit. So yes, these are templates, but at the same time, you can fully edit these templates however you please. So when we look at all the search items, we can create a YouTube banner. If you know, if you go to the YouTube studio and you have your channel at the very top, you have this banner. You can create banners. You can create uh, landscape ads if you were into making ads. Uh, if I were to type in YouTube thumbnail, then you'll notice right here, you have a YouTube thumbnail. So that's what we're going to do today. So, and, and again, you can type in anything you want here. It doesn't have to say YouTube thumbnail. You can also type in, if I wanted to make a beauty YouTube thumbnail, I could just type in beauty YouTube thumbnail and it'll give me beauty thumbnail. If I want to type in uh, corporate YouTube thumbnail, I could just do that and search for corporate YouTube thumbnail and it'll give me those different types of thumbnails through a template. If it was a vlog, you can go vlog or if it's travel. Again, it's up to your niche and whatever you're looking to do. Uh, all we're going to do is create a thumbnail. Now, there's also suggested uh, templates right here. You can start from scratch and you can have other templates here. All we're going to do literally is just click on YouTube thumbnails. So let's go and click on YouTube thumbnail. Now, what's great about Canva is that you can narrow this down as much as you want. So when you think of a, a thumbnail, there's so many industries and so many niches out there about thumbnails. It dot not just you on a picture. It's not just some text on a on a on an image canvas. There's so many reasons people create their own thumbnail, and there's different categories. So let's take a look back at those categories here. We have you know right now canvas saying that there's peace as a um, a main category, or music, or food, beauty, tutorials, travel, wedding, and just so forth. If you're creating a live stream, then you would click on live stream and you would have specific um, templates based off of YouTube Live or Twitch or whatever the case may be. 
if you continue on, you have vlog and funnies and Christmas and all the different holidays. So there's so much out there that you can just click on and be ready to go. All you have to do is maybe just change one or two things and be ready to go. So if you scroll down here, again, you can now even filter even more by style. If you like a certain type of fun style or retro, if I clicked on retro, this will change to more of a retro look for a lot of these, right? If I wanted to, let's say, have it to be more modern or minimalist, let's say I like the minimalist ones and I take retro out. Now I get more of a simple thumbnail that just has the quick text and then an image. So these are all just basic templates and I can click on one of these templates and I actually will show you that. But what we're going to do for right now is we're going to create a blank canvas. And that's your very first one. No matter what you filter by, you'll have a blank canvas right here. So we're going to click on the blank canvas. Now, unfortunately, you're not able to see that right now. So give me one second. Boom. I got a sharing of the blank canvas. And when you look at the blank canvas, it'll look like a thumbnail, but it's completely white, obviously. You can also then on the left-hand side, click different templates. So it'll just automatically apply those templates right into the basic blank canvas. Well, we're not going to do any of that. Before I even do that, I want to talk about some of the basic necessities when looking into a thumbnail and what is most required for a thumbnail. Some of the biggest mistakes that anyone makes, uh, content creator, YouTube uh, creator, whatever they're making thumbnails for, the biggest mistakes, I want to describe that right now. Let me see if I can pull this open for you. That's all right. So we got mistakes when making thumbnails. So the biggest mistakes that people use is one, it's too much text. When you look at any type of, and I'm going to put that this way, boom, boom, boom. There I am. Uh, when you look at how a thumbnail works, the thumbnail itself is supposed to capture the audience. So if I am looking at a feed, I want to see what's most attractive before I click on that video. If I see that there's way too many words and so much text, I'm overwhelmed as a viewer. And two, I might think it's unprofessional or amateurish. So I would then just pass right by it. If there's too much, too much text on the thumbnail, it does, it serves two purposes that are a disadvantage to you. The first thing is it's hard to read. You got to think, where do those thumbnails get looked at the most? Well, most people are probably using their phone. And when they look at their phone, that size is very, very small. So when you're looking at thumbnails and you're scrolling through YouTube, you have very little real estate room for that viewer to say, I want to click on that video over someone else's. That's why when you look at thumbnails that have so much text, while it may look good to the creator, the content creator that made that because they had it on a large screen, maybe on their desktop or on a dedicated iPad or other device, it might have looked good there. But when it got shrunk down to the smaller size of a phone, now they have a hard time looking at what the text that you're trying to convey to that viewer. The second thing is when you have an overwhelming amount of text, YouTube, there's an algorithm and it looks at the text and tries to pinpoint what this video is about so it can rate you accordingly. And YouTube's algorithm is so smart and so sophisticated that I'm not going to dive into all the intricacies about the thumbnail or the video itself and how they process that. But YouTube will determine whether that thumbnail uh, shows about what the video is about. So if you have a video that's all about creating thumbnails and you have all this text that may not totally concern uh, on the thumbnail. So maybe you might have making money or DoorDash or Grubhub or whatever the case may be. You have them all these different words and text. 
dollar signs when it really should only just be maybe one or two words or three words that's going to hook the viewer based off those key words. That's what YouTube wants to see. So it'll rate your video behind the scenes. You don't even know this, but it'll rate your video lower on the scale versus someone else's video that may not be as high quality, but because the thumbnail shows a the the, the right keywords or phrases or maybe not even any words at all, it's very minimal. Because it doesn't have overwhelming amount of text, it's going to rate higher than someone who has tons of text. So when I take a look at uh, the mistake number one, it's absolutely, and let's uh, increase this a little bit, absolutely too much text will make a big difference for your video. Repeating the title text. And a lot of people will do this when they want to um, convey the same thing. Right. If, if your thing, if your video is about creating thumbnails and your title is how I created the best thumbnail for my video in the title itself, it has thumbnail and greatest or best or whatever the case may be, but in your thumbnail should not be best thumbnail because you're repeating those same words. You want to have something that's different or unique. So YouTube, it's an algorithm says, okay, it's not just about creating the best thumbnails, but here's something else about it. And so you don't want to repeat title text because all that's going to do is again, rate you lower and too much or overcrowded images. Too often we see overcrowding of different images or different elements, dollar signs and money and DoorDash. If we've seen a lot of them, you know it, uh, different images other than the image itself that should be displayed. And when we make a thumbnail and I do this really quickly, you'll notice a theme and that is about 80% of your thumbnail is going to just be one thing. The other 20% is going to be a combination of two other things. And that's going to be an element or a text. And we're going to go over the elements and the text, but your main focus is going to be 80%. And that's only going to be one thing. So that could be an image of you. It could be an image of a car. It could be an image of a gold bar. I mean, it could be anything. If you're showing off a, a, um, let's say if you're doing a tutorial about the camera that I'm, filming right now with, I'm going to put the picture of a Sony mirrorless camera because that is the focus. That should be 80%, a minimum of 80% of your thumbnail should be what I'm talking about. If it's going to be DoorDash, then I might have me or maybe DoorDash, the logo or the, the bag, the catering bag. If it's a catering water, it should just be the focus, a focal point of your video should be 80% of the thumbnail. The other 20% is going to be a combination of elements if needed and text if needed. So that's the biggest three mistakes when making any kind of thumbnail is one too much text, repeating text and too much or overcrowded images. And here's a bonus website. Go to thumbsup.tv. So let's do that right now. If you go to thumbsup.tv, you can then take any thumbnail. So in this case, I'm actually going to click on a thumbnail and I have my thumbnails right here. I have this one thumbnail that I just uploaded and you can see how it looks not only in a web a web browser, but if it's small on a phone or a tablet, a sidebar, if it's on a channel page, channel small on the history. So you can look at how the thumbnail looks just based off of different sizes. If it's on mobile, if it's on a column. So if I were to click on toggle dark mode, I can then see how it looks in dark mode because there are certain times when you have certain text that might not look good or the background may not look good in dark mode. So then you can go through this entire thing and say, oh, 
Well, that's how it's going to look with the timestamp here. That's how it's going to look with the timestamp and the thumbnails being small. So, and that also makes a big difference as well. Like this video is not 14 minutes and 56 seconds. Let's uh, increase that up a little bit. It is not 14 minutes and 56 seconds, but why do we have that here? To show if you had any text right here, it's going to be hidden and it's going to clash with this title right here, which is this time bar. And YouTube does that with all videos. So this is a great website that you can take a look at and you can compare your thumbnails and see how it looks on different sizes and different ways on the um, YouTube platform itself, how it looks on TV. See how it looks on TV where it's so large. You would be able to see that just fine. And that may look great. But then if I were to go and look at it on a column, see how small that is. How much can you read? I'm going to have to really zoom in. Even with that, some people still may not see. So I really would have to zoom in to see how that would look on a column. And so that's why using a website like this is so important to your thumbnail creation. So now that we've seen uh, the website and we know some basics of creating a, a thumbnail, let's actually go ahead and create the thumbnail. So we're going to go ahead and let's go back to share that tab. We're back where it was a blank canvas. So the one thing you want to look at is Canva allows you to do multiple layers. Layers are important because you can position a background, an image, and text, and they don't have to be all merged together. They can be in different positions within the canvas, which will give you that either 3D look, or you can change and manipulate how the text looks without messing up the image and vice versa. You can do the same thing with elements and not mess up with the image itself. So what we're going to go ahead and, and I'm going to create a basic thumbnail. Um, really, I'm going to create a thumbnail on creating thumbnails, almost like what I just did and what you just saw, we're going to do it very basic. So before I even look at any of the templates, I'm going to actually just go ahead and on this left bar right here, let's uh, maximize that a little bit. You have uh, design elements, text brand branding is if you want to create your own brand. So you have your own colors and fonts and everything else. Again, I'm not going to go too much into Canva, but if you wanted to create a brand kit, you would be able to create your own brands. And so it makes it easier. Every time you create a thumbnail, you already have the same colors and the same fonts already built in. So you don't have to keep changing it every time. Um, and then there's uploads. And then all the way down here, you have a thing called background. So we're going to go ahead and create a background. And if you notice real quick, it has like recently used and landscapes and patterns and gradients and abstracts. And there's a whole bunch uh, backgrounds you could use. So a couple of things you could do is you can sort by color. So if I just wanted to create a, let's say a blue type of background, boom, I get a blue background. If let's say I want to create a gradient background, I can just click on gradients and I can, let's say I like this green one right here. Boom. That's my background. If I wanted to have a little more uh, look to it, like a, a textured look, I can have that as well. So let's just use this as, as my background. All right. Again, backgrounds are not the focal point. It's just give you some sort of a visual cue, visual look um, that most people want. Some people don't need. So, but we're going to create just this because I like to have different variety of colors. And then what is my focal point? You know, think about it. I'm creating thumbnails, right? And I am doing a video straight up. I'm looking at a camera. So maybe the thumbnail is going to have a picture of me. So I've already taken some pictures and I put it in my uploads folder. If you click on uploads right here, I have a whole load of images that I've uploaded and you can see there's many different versions of me and the things that I, I do and I put all of them together. Here's a cat right here and some other images. Every time you add an image, it's good to have because you never know when you're going to reuse let's say this image of me right here. Um, I can just add that to my thumbnail now, or I can add it to another thumbnail later down the line. I don't have to keep retaking photos of myself. 
So I'm going to, um, since I have a lot of photos here, I'm going to take the one I just kind of uploaded and it's going to be this one with the thumbs up. So we're going to just go ahead and click that. And if you notice, there's two ways you can do it. Let me actually hit delete again. You can just drag it right into the canvas itself, which does the exact same thing as me just clicking on the image. And that applies it to this canvas as well. But you'll notice a few things. One, it's smaller. It's not a full page. And two, there's this background over here. So one of the things that I talked about earlier, that there are differences between the free and the pro. With the pro, you have a little more customization. Think of it like Photoshop. You can really edit your, your images in almost real time. So if I were to click on this, I can go over here to edit photo. And there's this thing called Magic Studio. And this Magic Studio really is amazing because there's so many functions within this that's really just one click. And it's one click and you get a variety of options that would normally take a video or a graphic artist hours to do. And, you know, if they were using software five, 10 years ago, it could take them days to do. In this case, we're looking at seconds to do. So if I wanted to, Let's just say, for example, I want to get rid of this entire background and just make it just me giving the thumbs up. All I got to do, you'll see there's a button right here that looks like a little crown, this little icon. Let's uh, make that a little bit bigger right there. You'll see that icon. That means it's for the pro account. So if you see that, it's for the pro. And when you don't see it, like right here, it's not there. That means it's for the free account. So just keep that in mind that there's a lot of filters and effects that might be free and then some that are not free. In this case, the background remover is part of the pro version. So if I click on that, it has to wait till the image uploads first, which is already in there. And within a few seconds, this will take off the entire background and it does it pretty accurately, I might say. So that looks good, right? But you'll notice right off the bat, what does it look like? It has this like square piece right here. So there's a couple of things I can do to make that look good. All right. I could just take this and, and the easiest way is to put this right in the corner over there. So it just looks like me right there, just giving the thumbs up, but it still seems a little small. I can go ahead and increase that size. Maybe just put it just around, around there and boom. Now it's like me full out on that thumbnail, which you see up from a lot of different people. The other thing you can do, and if I really wanted to, I could go ahead and flip this horizontally, make it this way if I wanted to. Um, I can also flip it vertically if I wanted to. And let's say I was doing an upside down type of video uh, or thumbnail, I would be able to do that as well. So let's go back to the original way. All right. And there's another option over here. If you click on edit, you can, there's a, a pro version called the magic expand. And if I were to click on that, I could tell it Well, I see there's a lot of like, there's this block right here, but I don't want to put that right to the corner. What I can do is I can expand this to be the full image. Let's say the full image itself and click on magic expand. What this will do is it will take my image and via AI, and its algorithm, it'll make something to make it look more appealing and you can choose which one you like. So it's not a hundred percent perfect, right? There's you, obviously you could see my shoulder looks a lot larger uh, than it should be. It's not as realistic, but you can then play around with this. If you had different types of images and it will make varieties that maybe you do like, and you do want to add on. So it doesn't have to be a corner. If I wanted to leave it right in the center, um, I can then just use this or I can use this or whatever I feel like doing. Not something I typically use, but it's something as an option. If you wanted to expand the image, we're going to hit cancel and we're actually going to put this right back where it was in the corner because I do like the corner look. So, once I have that image, that is your focal point. Remember I told you it was 80% of your thumbnail should be your focal point. And in this case, my focal point is me. 
Now I can play around with this if I wanted to and just click on the image itself. And there's a lot of other options I would be able to do. If I click on photo and I scroll down, I can change effects and filters and things like that. If I really wanted to, I would be able to do almost anything with these filters, just like how Instagram or any of those other filtering programs and just makes it look different, right? So in this case, I want it to be a little more cool. So there's different cool type of images and filters. I'm going to choose this one right here. I kind of like that. So we're going to leave that just the way it is. And you can change the intensity of it as well, as you could tell how brighter or darker it got from that, from that cool look. And if I really wanted to make it vintage, I would be able to do a vintage look or antique, black and white. You know, I like to, you know what? Let's leave it like a black and white type of look. So there's ink that looks like a newspaper. Here's the newspaper one, the film look. Slate, you know what? I like the slate look. So let's leave it as the slate look. And you know why I did that? Because even though it's black and white, it actually shows pop or a visual cue for the eyes to look there other than anywhere else. So we're going to leave it just that. Another thing you can do when you click on edit, which some people I find are doing this more and more, is you can use Pixify where you can pixelize your image. And it's the new craze right now that everyone's doing. You can pixel, pixelate any type of image. We're not going to do that today, but you would have that capability. Another thing that people are doing is adding shadows. And if you click on shadow, it's not just like a shadow in the background, like you're thinking, it can also be like an outline. So if I clicked on outline and changed it to white, now I get that little more 3d pop look that you know everyone's going for so if i wanted to i can just move this down a little bit and maybe even maybe even just bring it up a little bit in size and now it's almost like that that different type of look that people are going for right now with um the outlines if i wanted to i can also rotate it you'll see this little icon right here that's a rotational icon i can also rotate the image if i wanted to and let's just make this a little bit larger just like so so now I have my image that's rotated just a little bit, giving the thumbs up, uh, and that is my focal point. But there's something missing here, right? I'm talking about thumbnails, and you have the image of me because that's where I'm, I'm sitting in front of the camera, but there's something missing, and that's text. Now, we talked about earlier we don't want too much text, and we also don't want... Um, texts that don't matter or have no interest into the video. If you're doing a video about thumbnails, you don't want to put DoorDash right on here, or you don't want to have, hey, look at me type of text. You want to have something that's going to be engaging, but also tells the story of what this video is going to be about in just three seconds or less. So we're going to go here to text. And when you go to text, there's many different options that you can do. You can do just an add a basic text box if you want. If you click on that, there you go. You get a little text box. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to hit the trash icon. There's also different text styles. So if I just click on the headline, it's going to be a little larger. If I wanted to, I can click out of that. I can do sub to headlines. I can do body of text. And then they also have different font combinations that are already pre-built. I have color, scheme, font size, font uh, itself. So you have all that capability just right from here. So if I wanted to, I can just click on, let's say, baked fresh, and I could then just make a my text. I can change it to whatever I want. It doesn't have to be baked fresh, obviously, because that has nothing to do with a thumbnail. So now I can create and say um, best... thumbs. Okay. And you'll notice it went to down to the NX line. I can just go ahead and move this over just a little bit and boom, there's best thumbs. But what do you notice? You notice that it's, there's too much going on here, right? So yeah, there's a lot of text and maybe you can read this, but maybe you can't, or it takes away from the image itself. So we can go ahead and click this and just make it a little bit smaller if we wanted to. And we can just put that right over here. 
Well, that's not bad, and that's a good start. You could just go ahead and upload that, and that is your thumbnail. But if the title we talked about earlier was creating the best thumbnail, I probably don't want to have best and thumbs or thumbnail on my thumbnail, right? And there's a couple of reasons to that. One, if I say best thumbs, what does that mean? Like literally the thumbs? I'm saying thumbs, but we know it as being the thumbnail, but I, I'm giving a thumbs up and just saying best thumbs. This video could just be about the best looking thumbs, but my title said best looking thumbnail. I don't want to duplicate and I don't want to confuse the viewer. So what I'm going to do right here, instead of the best thumbs, I'm going to say, maybe I'll change best over here to um, most. And let's just think, change this to creative. Okay, so now I have it saying most creative and I'll make it a little bit smaller. You know, that's just one thing right there. It doesn't have to be two words. It doesn't have to be one word or three words. It could be whatever you want. But now this gives it a little bit different. It's like, oh, this is the most creative and best thumbnail. I kind of want to see what this all is all about. Or I might just want to pay if I, if I just delete this all together. I might do something else like, let's say this one right here. Let's delete that. I could just say here, uh, incredible, right? Let's uh, maximize that a little bit. And I'll just delete the uh, U. And I could just say it's incredible, right? It's just one word to, to describe the thumbnails. Incredible. Or let's say if you know anything about me, I like to say easy money. I can just say easy, right? And I can make that a little bit larger so it's visually uh, appealing. And then if let's say I want to create and just say, oh, it's easy, that's just, it, it, it satisfies the viewer's uh, acknowledgement of what the video is going to be, be about. It says the title is the best thumbnails. And my thumbnail says itself says easy. Well, then it tells the viewer this is going to be about creating easy and the best thumbnails. And maybe I want to click on that. So I like the, the word easy. So I'm going to leave easy there. And at that time, I say, you know what? That the color scheme is not really what I like. So I'll, you can go right over to here at this bar up here. And you have many different options. I can change it bold or I can leave it to bold. If I want to change the color, I just click on the color. And let's say I want to use it as like a deep blue. Boom, I have deep blue. If I want to do green, I can do green. Well, I kind of like the color that it has. I just don't like the background color, which is like that red. Well, what you can do is if you click on easy itself, there's this eclipse, which is the three icons. And you have multiple more effects that you can do. So if you click on effects, I can make it with a shadow or I can lift it up with a, a dark black in there and it makes it look 3D. I can do hollow or splicing. I can do outlines. A lot of people are doing now glitching, which is uh, more of that glitch look neon. So uh, some people use the neon with different colors. If you had a darker background, it might look good or echoing. So you have like three different layers on there. It's up to you. And you can change the colors of these things as well. So if I wanted to make it like, like that or blue, I can now have multiple colors, right? And it just makes different shades. So I kind of like that. Let's just, uh, let's just take a look. I want to use red, like a dark red. So it gives more of a pop and there's my easy right there. So that's what I want to do. Now I can easily just upload this uh, as my thumbnail and I'm good to go. So just one other things I would like to do. So if you go over to elements, remember I was talking about how there's 80% of your thumbnail is your focal point. And we talked about how the focal point in this case is me giving thumbs up. And then 20% is going to be anything else. In this case, it's just text. That's 20%. And that would be just fine. But sometimes I want to create, I want to add something to that thumbnail. So in this case, I might want to add an element. Elements are pretty much any clip art or graphics or anything else that would 
be beneficial to your thumbnail or to your graphic. So in let's say I, my thumbnail uh, or actually my video is about creating a thumbnail in less than two minutes. And my thumbnail itself, I want to have a timer. So to signify that this is a timed video or, I, you know, maybe just to highlight, like we can do this in two minutes, right? So you go to search elements up here and you can type in anything you like, anything you like. But in this case, I'm just going to type in timer. I do have that as my recents and I get all these different graphics or videos. I even get audio if you're going to create videos. So anything you want is right down here. So let's go to graphics real quick. And you have so much of a variety of graphics that you can use. If you don't like any of these and you want to drill it down even more, you can type in timer and then something else or you can do it in the before it. So let's say I want to put two minute timer. Now it's going to show me graphics that have the two in there or something like the two. So maybe this two minutes would look really good. So when I click on that, if you'll notice right here again, I, I showed you, if you see that little crown, that means you're in a pro. So there's going to be a lot of images that might say for pro. And then if you have to go all the way down to find something that's for free. So just keep that in mind that, you know, if you don't have the pro version, you're going to be limited on how much graphics and elements you can put on. And sometimes you don't need elements and sometimes you don't need graphics as what I'll show you. It could be just overwhelming. So we want to keep it simple. So I'm just going to show you for my sake, I have this image of two minutes with a stopwatch. So we click on that. And if you'll notice, it made it black and where it was white. Well, that's because the default is going to be on black, but you can change that color right up here to whatever you want. So if I want to make it white or off white, white, yellow, whatever I wanted to do, I have that capability. Let's say I wanted to make that just like this, but I wanted it in the background to make it almost like, almost like a transparent background. So what we could do is let's just say I clicked on that. I like the uh, yellow and, but it's hiding from my face. What I can do is I can go to position right over here and you go to layers or you can just do it right from here forward or backward or to the back. That means with every layer, so you have the background layer, which is all the way in the back, and you might have your, your picture right up in the front. If the element is even further up from that, you want it to go back a little bit. So we would hit backward. And you'll notice when I do that, it, be, it went behind my face, but not behind the background. If I were to, let's say I go back to forward and I hit back to the back, a, what it will do is it'll only go as far as where the background is, not behind the background. Because what's the point of that? So, but if you didn't have a background, let's say it was a white background and you had multiple layers, you can then tell it to go all the way back if you wanted to. So let's say I just want it behind me. It looks all right, but doesn't show much, right? Like, I, why do I even need that? So what I could do is I'm going to click back on the two minute icon again, and I'm going to make it a little bit larger. Let's go right around there and I'll move it just like so. It's okay, but something's clashing with it, right? Like I'm seeing too much and I don't know what that is. What I can then still go to is if I click on that, I can go back to these three dots over here and there's one called transparency. If I click on transparency, I can actually change the transparency to look like it's, Hey, it's subtly there, but something, it means something, but it's just added. So it's not overtaking the visual cue but it's something nonetheless, like, Hey, it's about a timer. So I can just have that just like, so I put the transparency and boom, I got just something that looks nice. I don't, I still don't like it because again, now you have this minutes that you don't even know says minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. I'm going to go to position. I'm going to click on that and I'm just going to hit the delete key because I don't need that. But these are the things that you could do. If I wanted to add, let's say this two icon over here, and I want to change the uh, image color to like a red. Uh, I could do that and I can make that a little bit bigger if I wanted to. 
as you can see, this is all stuff you can do um, very easily with Canva. If I wanted to make the transparency again, I could then change that. And now it just gives you that different look. Now you'll notice right here, it's overlapping with my image and that's because I didn't change the position of it. Again, if you change the position to go backward, it goes behind the image. I can then take this image if I wanted to and just rotate it a little bit. Just a little couple of things that you can do to your thumbnail. You don't need these elements. You don't need to add anything really, except for the main focal point and maybe one or two other things. If you just want to use it as text or no text at all, and let's say I took the text out, right? And just had it as two minutes. I could do that as well. Now, if the title said, and don't worry about this, the, the text up here, I'm just using that for example. If the text was, if the title was create a thumbnail in two minutes, I would just put that two minutes. It knows the viewer will know, oh, this is about creating thumbnails in two minutes. It gives that like rush look. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to delete that two minutes. I'm going to bring this over here. And I like just the way it is right? I mean, that's all you need to do. You could also, if you wanted to go to elements over here and you can put in, um, let's say I want to put like gradients. I could put like gradients or if I want to put lighting, if I type in lighting, light effect, you can see all the different types of lights that you can add to your image. So let's say I just want to add this like little um, image right here. I can put that right over here to highlight maybe me, right? Or if I wanted to, I can put that right next to the exclamation point to give that little oomph for the easy, right? You can do anything you want uh, that makes it look like maybe a camera shot or Whatever, whatever you want to do. If I want to have some highlights over here, I could do that as well. And it just gives you that different feel to it. If I wanted to, I can put in the word like grunge. And there, these are like overlay grunges that I would be able to do. If I click on the graphic itself, you'll notice it really doesn't do much, right? But if I expand that image, it just gives a little bit different feel to it, right? Now that may not look that great, but if I go to position and I put that position a little bit backwards, I now have the background look like it's grungy, but not for me. So then I can just, if you click on this button right here, it says duplicate, I can duplicate that, put it over here and again, go back to backward and it made it into the background. So now I have this like, grungy looking background with me as the focal point, giving a thumbs up saying easy, because this is a very easy thumbnail to do. If I wanted to delete something, I could do that as well. If I wanted to also take those grunginess, let's say I made two of them. Again, I'm not going to go too much about Canva and click on both of them at the same time. I can then change the transparency of that. So it's not too much but just enough to give it a little bit more oomph to it. You see what I did there? So now I created a basic thumbnail that anyone can visually see and wow, that looks appealing. I kind of want to see what that video is all about. And how long did I, that take? Maybe a few extra minutes because I'm explaining this, but at the same time, it's a basic thumbnail that does the job of showing people this video is something that you're going to want to click on. So now we're going to go ahead and I'll just share this. And what I mean by share is I can go ahead and download this thumbnail. And when you download it, you want to either keep it the same way, or if you want to increase the size, you can increase the size. I usually go to one and a half of the size because uh, 1920 by 1080, that's your HD size. And I always hit compress file, lower quality because lower quality on a larger image makes it better. And there's also a size limit for YouTube. So I'm going to go ahead and compress that file and hit download now. And that's it. When I do that, it'll download what my image is going to look like. This was all based off of a white canvas. And that's it. Now I can use that thumbnail onto YouTube. Now that's one. Real quick. Yeah, I'm going to set a timer for just two minutes. And I'm going to show you how you can create a thumbnail 
in literally just two minutes. So we're going to go ahead and let's go back to the main page. Okay. And let's go ahead and put this timer on two minutes. Ready, set, go. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a YouTube thumbnail. So I'm going to click on YouTube thumbnail. Um, I want to create about thumbnails. So I could either do like, let's, let's just choose this because, you know, it looks pretty decent. I'm going to customize this de template. And I don't like this guy because it's obviously not me. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. I'm going to take one of my uploads and I'm going to have one of my uploads. Now I have the Canva Pro. So I'm going to go ahead, remove the background. I'm going to go ahead and flip this because my, uh, my finger is pointing to that. I'm going to make it a little bit larger. Put this right here in the center. And you know what? I'm not a big fan of these colors. So I'm going to change some of the colors. Uh, let's go with uh, green there. You know what? Let's go with red. I like that red there. And make this other red. Keep it just that way. The blue. I'm not sure I like the blue. Let's make it, um, let's make it yellow there. Boom. That looks good. Now the most attractive. I don't like that font. So I'm going to click on font. Uh, let's go with, um, let's go with that. The most attractive. I don't like the most, so I'm just going to get rid of that and just have it as attractive. That looks decent. It's attractive, right? Not just me, but the thumbnail itself. I'm going to just add one quick thing. I'm going to add, um, grunginess to it and I'm going to change it to white. Let's change the position backwards. I'm just going to put it all the way down. All right. And I'm going to hit share. Boom. Download. Boom. Download. And we have five, four, three, two, one. Boom. We have a thumbnail in less than two minutes. Eye catching thumbnail ready to go. I'm going to hit a timer for that and hit done. And in two minutes, I created a thumbnail. And you can do the same thing. I hope this helps out. Oh, that entire time you were not able to see that. <laughs> so let's, uh, I'm going to show you what I did real quick. I apologize, man. Uh, that thumbnail right here. All I did literally was create the thumbnail. Let me try that one more time because I think we need to do that one more time. So let's get out of that. Let's create that thumbnail one more time. Let's do a brand new thumbnail. All right. We're going to create this one more time. We're going to try it out. You ready, set, and we got two minutes on the clock. Go right ahead. So we're going to create, um, I kind of like this minimalist one. So we're going to go ahead and click this customize template. Let's go back to now. Now we could see it. Um, I'm going to take the uh, background out. So I don't like this background. Boom. Take that out. But I want to use a picture of me. And so I'm going to take that picture of me. And I'm going to go to edit like I did before. I'm going to take the background out and I'm going to flip it. So the arrow is towards me and I'm going to make this a little bit bigger because we need that just a little bit bigger. Maybe just move it just a hair over. Okay. Um, so in this one, this video is going to be about thumbnail. So again, I'm going to keep this uh, as simple. Um, how to, and we're going to say how to create a um, easy thumbnail. Let's just say how to create, um, let's actually, let's do it easy and bold thumbnail. Okay. And we'll leave step by step there. So I'm going to move my image just a little bit. I'm actually going to take all of this, put it up a little bit. Let's put this over here. And I'm going to change the color of this to, let's go with a deep black nav. Let's make it red. Boom. 
just like that. Now, if I wanted something in the background, I could do that as well. I can just go to elements and I can add things to that. Uh, in this case, I'm actually going to go to background. And let's just say I wanted to use, uh, let's use this background right here. Uh, or let's use yellow. And then that's it. I'm just going to go ahead and hit share, download. I'm going to uh, do it 1.5 and compress and download. And I still have two seconds left and it is downloading now. So really within two minutes, I was able to create a basic thumbnail just like that. I hope this helps when creating your thumbnail. It doesn't have to be extravagant. It doesn't have to be crazy. It doesn't have to be insane uh, when creating a thumbnail. It just needs to be simple enough that the viewer is going to be able to look at it and say, that's what I want to watch. And eventually you'll become creative enough to change how the text looks or the fonts look, or maybe the images are a little bit different. All I did real quick, just to show you this one more time, this image right here was literally just taken right before this video was aired. And I just took it with using my phone. So I took it using my phone. I sent it to myself and just uploaded it to Canva. It's really just that simple. And when you have the pro version, you can use some of those extra tools that will make things a lot easier. If you wanted to use pictures or stills from your um, gig work, or if you're doing gig work or anything, really, you would have that capability just to use that if you wanted to and just put the image in there. Or you can just take an image of yourself pointing at something or smiling, giving the thumbs up, and it makes things a lot better, more appealing to look at. So that is it. That This is a basic seminar to teach you the, how to use not only Canva, but how to use Canva to make a thumbnail image on YouTube. If you like this type of content and you want to see more, please hit that like button, comment down below. And also, if you could share this, share this out to others who are members who are not members. This is a members only video, but if you like more of this content, please let me know. I will be doing another video that talks about titles and other packaging things for your video. And that is pretty much it. So I want to thank you very much for this, uh, for the time you spent with me. This was a little over an hour and we did not only just the recap of what thumbnails are and why they're important, but also to show you the Canva, the templates and how to do it from scratch. And then a quick lesson in less than two minutes. Creating thumbnails don't have to be hard. We make it difficult, but this with this piece of software can do this really, really quick. Thank you all for joining me. And until next time, I will see you down the road.